Welcome to Fast Talk. Today we're joined by Town Manager John Cross to discuss uh, Proposition 464 that will be on the ballot this fall. Welcome, John. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you having me. So Prop 464, also known as Permanent Base Adjustment? You got it. That's right. So Permanent Base Adjustment, Prop 464, that we're going to be voting on um, in August. Is this anything to do with a tax increase? Um, or spending more money than we have. Chris, thanks, thanks very much for um, your interest in the Chamber's support of the town and our partnership. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And uh, you're following this particular question and issue in front of the community. Um, in response to your question with respect to the permanent base adjustment and, and whether or not it's a tax increase or allows the, the council to um, add a new tax or increase fees or add any new fees, the answer to that is no, it does not. Um, the permanent base adjustment, similar to home rule or the alternative expenditure limit, which voters have approved um, five times over the last um, 20 years, uh, allows the mayor and council through the annual budgeting process to continue to adopt balanced budgets and essentially um, meet our foundational financial principle, which is living within our means. Right. So you mentioned we voted on it five times um, so far. So I've I've lived in Queen Creek now for 17 years and have to vote on every four years. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that, and um, let's see if we can get this, is um, uh, there's a state formula um, and it's based on 1979, 1980 right. numbers and we weren't incorporated yet. So they just, they just assigned a value <laughs> to us. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's one of the more, um, Confusing, if not perplexing, issues that's uh, that's wrapped up into this this uh, alternative expenditure or permanent base adjustment, uh, you know, question or issue. But you're absolutely right. In 1979, the state legislature adopted a uh, new statute, feeling that property tax taxes were increasing at a rate faster than personal income growth. So what happened was um, a base number. In Queen Creek's instance, $818,277 was tied to what the estimated population was for the town at that time, which was just a little over 2,500 people, even though that was 10 years earlier than when we incorporated, uh, where we had no real official population. That 818277 number is fixed in a point in time as the base expenditure number, uh, which you know, as you know, 40 years from, from then, um, it's a much different community and certainly our growth rate, um, you know, averaging six to 9% over the last several years, we're forecasting, you know, more or less the same rate of growth over the next several years, uh, really becomes quite challenging, uh, almost, it really is impossible for, for Queen Creek to be able to uh, use that base number and the state expenditure limitation and still meet critical priority one services like public safety, fire and police, uh, fire medical, um, as well as, um, you know, continue to build and make progress, significant progress on our transportation program. Right. So they take that number, um, add some growth factor to it for inflation, right. for, for people, and we come up with a number that's like 63 million if we didn't pass right. Prop 464? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, for the, yeah, by way of an example, exactly right. We. That 818,277 number is multiplied by an inflation factor and then multiplied by a population factor. And then you come up with a 63.5 million. That's the total the state says that Queen Creek could spend for the current fiscal year. Now our, our current fiscal year, which we're in the middle of now, ends up at the end of June 30th. But by comparison, because about three and a half years ago, voters approved home rule, which gave local budgeting authority to the elected officials most closest to the needs of the community, um, the council adopted a budget of $487 million. So you can imagine if that was not approved, we'd have more than an 80% uh, reduction requirement per state statute and the expenditure limitation. It just, it just really is out of, out of sync. Out of sync right. here. Especially trying to build the community up out of the ground. So. Uh, water, yeah. wastewater management, solid waste management, that's all like at 180 million by itself. Right. So exactly. essentially we're going to have to decide between water, police, fire, <laughs> parks. Um, we can't have um, very much of any of it if we, if we don't have the ability to spend what we need to spend. Yeah, you really, gosh, at 63.5 million, you know, you, you, 
for this current fiscal year, you could fund the police and fire department, um, projected increases over the next couple of years, even with a little bit of an increase, about 63.5 if, if voters did not approve the um, permit-based adjustment. You know, few fiscal years, really, is just police and fire. So that's no, no utilities, just like you said, the water, sewer. We have to figure out, a, a, you know, some alternative there. Um, and that includes, of course, you know, water resources planning, sustainability planning in that precious resource. Um, and then, you know, for the last uh, really 15 years in Clean Creek, the roads program has been really priority one, 1A, one right. you know, for uh, the mayor and council, really critical issue. Uh, we're stuck with that. We, we could not move forward. You know? No roads, not even asphalt for them. Um, so, but there's a little bit different um, this go around. So I voted on um, uh, home rule now uh, three, maybe four times. Um, but this time it's called permanent base adjustment. So uh, we got the word permanent in there. So what, is yeah. that, uh, what does that really mean for us? Um, about half of the communities in the state of Arizona uh, have voted uh, in favor of permanent base adjustment for their local communities. The other half have the four-year renewal option, which Queen Creek has been doing for the last um, you know, 20 years or so. They financially plan beyond a four-year time period, which we, we try to do anyway, but it's very, very difficult under the, you know, those limitations of, of the four-year uh, window. Um, allows us to do a much better job with respect to planning and forecasting and lining up those limited resources for those out years with respect to the financial planning. And, and, and we really think, as we talk to the community and our, our various boards and commissions, it's, it's common sense to really understand that, yeah, you should be doing more long-range financial planning. That makes sense. How could we properly position the financial security of the community just beyond you know, the next couple, three or four years. So permanent base adjustment allows, allows the, uh, uh, the community and the council, of course, to be able to do that. So there's more local control. We still balance the budget every year. We're required to do that, um, you know, by the state constitution and Arizona law, no changes with that. And again, it doesn't authorize the uh, council to increase anyone's taxes, uh, add new taxes, um, increase fees, add new fees. It's essentially authorizing, again, similar to home rule, staying with our, with our means and spending the revenues we already receive. And so basically, we just won't be having an election every four yeah, years. Yeah, in its most literal sense, yeah. We save a little bit of money. We're not having to run an election every four years. Um, and you can so do the long-range planning. You can do the long-range financial planning, which, so. which for this community is very critical. You know, we, um, the last, the most recent you know, census, we were the fastest rate of growth community in the state of Arizona, despite all of the, uh, you know, very, you know, foundational growth management policies, tools, and, and timing and sequencing of infrastructure, et cetera. Um, it's just an extremely attractive place to live, raise your family, open a business, uh, and, and, and people want to be part of that success. And certainly we want to embrace that as much as possible, too. So if your local government can be in sync with your business community, with your families, your, your, your larger community on these issues, we think that makes sense. Right, and building those roads as fast as we are able to and, and having all of those major CIP uh, capital improvement projects going, and um, I, for one, like my water at the house. Um, <laughs> so really important, but um, I think one of the final things to understand is that when you go to the ballot, um, there's all kinds of language on there, and it says basically that we're going to adjust the base to right. 5.5 million. So when you're looking at the ballot, um, there'll be all this language, and a yes vote increases the base from 800,000 to 5.5. Right. We run it through that formula, and we get to a number that's sustainable for the town. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, it really does get us better in alignment with where the community certainly is today, uh, what we're forecasting, and even what some of our regional partners are, are forecasting for this, this part of uh, you know, Maricopa County, Northwestern Pinal County, um, and really does allow us to be able to properly and, and more prudently manage the resources uh, based on the needs of the community. Uh, so that is, you're absolutely right, um, the ballot language will show that. That's uh, very strictly aligned with the requirements of uh, the Auditor General's office and um, you know, all the requirements that they have for with respect to how, how the ballot language should be reading. But that's, that's precisely exactly what the voters will be asked to consider. 
So a yes vote, change the uh, permanent uh, base. We don't have to have the election every four years. We can continue right. with our road construction, with our wastewater, uh, and life is good, and we can continue on in, in Queen Creek as it is. And we really appreciate your fiscal management, too. So recently, you you completely funded all of the retirement obligations, and we're like one of right. the only municipalities to have done that. Extremely unique. Um, you know, over the last several years, there's been a lot of national conversation with respect to unfunded liabilities pertaining to pensions and pension reform discussions. Certainly the state has had that. Queen Creek has been really in a unique position, again, tied to longer range financial planning that um, we, we really try to work on. Um, but several years ago, the mayor and council adopted a fully funding pension policy. So we essentially put aside some money every single year to make sure that we're meeting the 100% the funding obligations that the town's required to contribute as part of the uh, state retirement system and then also the public safety personnel retirement system. So. You know, fortunately, uh, we were able to say for this current fiscal year, we are 100% funded on all of the pension obligations, which as far as we can tell, we're the only community in the state of Arizona that's been able to do that. That's amazing. And we save 25% of, of our budget, so we have a, a maximum rainy day fund. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it really does shore up that fund balance, the savings account, if you will. Um, for certainly, uh, you know, really does provide, um, you know, a lot of flexibility for important capital improvement program needs and other, you know, other circumstances or issues that might be presented to, you know, the council um, either, either now or, you know, maybe uh, even several years down the road. Well, by all scorecards, Queen Creek's doing a great job financially. We, we really appreciate your leadership and that of the council and mayor. And, um, and great job, so, and all we can say is uh, vote yes on Prop 464. We appreciate you being here, John. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, just again, I really appreciate your, your leadership of the chamber, the, um, you know, many years of partnership with us and, and, and any all things with respect to economic development. You're doing a wonderful job and all the membership is as well. We, we really do see building the community as a partnership with all of the different stakeholders in our business community is absolutely critical. It's really the engine that, that allows us to be as creative as we are and be able to, to continue to move the community forward. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.